Kinichiwa, hope everyone's good. So I was talking to Frederick, the prepared Norseman, the other day. And I mentioned I got a ton of new surplus bags to try out. And he said he wanted to see them. So I thought I would do a video on them. In fact, I thought I would do a video just showing all of my surplus bags. And just quickly go through the ones that I've already shown. And I'll go more into the newer bags. But I uh, thought I would show the older bags first. And this will be a, just a video on my small collection of military surplus bags. So, anyway, I thought I'd start for this one. This one's the American Lodge Alice Pack that I got from Japan. There was a gift from Japan. And this one is now currently my long term bug out bag slash bushcraft bag for multiple days I'm planning a uh, three days stealth camp during the summer on Jirage Bay in the sand dunes and this will be perfect for that a little bit too big for the style of bushcraft that I want to get more into I carry way too much crap so I want to start using more of a haversack That'll force us to think more about what I want to take with us and ultimately to carry less useless crap in only what I need. So just for overnight as this is way too big. So anyway, bag I like. The only thing kind of don't like about it is I had the medium one a few years ago and with that I had the option of carrying it with the frame or without the frame the big one I have no options I only have to carry it with the frame I'm sure there's modifications I can do to it to carry it without the frame but this was a gift so I don't really want to modify it too much but uh I won't go fully into this. There's thousands of videos on YouTube of the Alice Packs. They're one of the most popular bags out there. But uh, that's the first one I wanted to show. So the next one from Norway and one of my personal favourites is the Ludvik aka Telemark Pack. This one's in nylon. Awesome pack. I can't remember what it is, I think it's 50 litres or something like that. Holds a ton of stuff. The frame is awesome. Steel. Leather's good. I wish I got the canvas one, but the only place that sells it is Military Mart, and I don't trust them. They've ripped us off once or twice in the past. And there's just something a bit dodgy about that company. So I try not to buy from them, but I won't go into that. But that's the Ludwig, one of my personal favourites. It's a very nice pack. Maybe sometime in the future I might get the canvas version. But uh, we'll see. So the third one, I did a whole video dedicated to this not all that long ago. So I won't go into this bag at all. But it's the French... F2, just a waterproof rubberized bag, two big pockets, something in it, rubbish, can't say, I don't take my crap home, if you can take it into the woods, you can take it back out, shock horror I know, straps, not the most comfortable in the world, but it's another one I like. Another one of my personal favourites, the Swedish LK35, must have for any bushcrafter, I think it's one of the most popular bushcraft bags in the UK, I think Sweden too, 
Don't see a lot of Americans carrying them though, or Australians. But uh, just a really nice bag. Straps are really comfortable. Steel frame is really versatile. Just got a good shape to it, you can carry a lot of crap on it. Just an awesome bag in general. Highly recommended if you don't have one, get one. So this one's the Swiss M90 Mountain Rucksack. I actually really like this. When I first got it, the straps weren't very comfortable. But uh, I improved it vastly by cutting these straps off. And I found the American Alice Pack straps or even better, the Swedish LK35 straps will easily fit through these loops. It rides high on the back, which personally I find comfortable, but uh, it's a very nice pack once you get rid of the original straps that it comes with. And this one's uh, rubberized as well. I have been caught out in a rainstorm with this, and it is waterproof. Tons of space for attaching your sleeping bag or wool blanket or whatever. Yeah, just a very nice bag. For bushcraft it's got a internal aluminium frame and pattern down here. It's a bag I like a lot. But that's a Swiss M90. This one's the Austrian Combat Rucksack, aka the Austrian Alice Pack. I'm not going to go fully into this one either because I plan on doing a whole video just on this bag after I've had it for a little while longer. Play around with it for a little more. But uh, it's got a massive pocket on the front and two huge pockets on the side. It's nylon. It's about the same capacity as the large Alice pack, about 70 litres. The harness is actually surprisingly comfortable, I find. I don't want to say too much on it, because like I say, I want to do a video just on this pack. But that's the Austrian Alice pack, or the Austrian Combat pack. And another one of my personal favourites is my Czechoslovakian M60 mounted on the Swedish M39 frame. Awesome pack. Did my EDC for just over a month now before I've now switched to the Polish bread bag for this month. But this bag has been awesome, very comfortable, got a huge steel grab handle now. And I just really like wearing dead animals, so the leather's a plus. And one of the newer packs is the Swedish SL35, the uh, pilot's or air crew pack, another one with a steel frame, I've already done a video on this one, very similar to the uh, Ludwig on the back, similar leather, the frame is much easier to remove on this though, plus the straps you can remove from the pack. So you can carry the frame that way, whereas on the Swedish one, these straps are attached to the bag. You can remove the frame, but you will need separate straps in order to carry the frame and anything you want lashed onto the frame besides the bag. But I really like this. Very heavy duty. The stitching is really good. Canvas. Awesome pack. Plan on using this one a lot as well. I've got that many bags. I don't know how I'm going to find time to 
get out there with work, but I'll find a way. So this is one of the newest ones. It's the East German Army Combat Pack. I've got the straps and everything, but I've been using this as a bike pannier. I got two of them, and they've been really handy for that. They just clip onto the rack of the bike. This one has got the waterproof coating all over it. And all the flaps and the waterproof bag as well, which is really thick, about a millimeter thick rubber. It's also waterproofed on the inside all the way down, so it's a great heavy duty bag. Heavy canvas. The other bag I've got is just straight canvas. It's not waterproofed on the top. It doesn't have the waterproof bag and it's not got the rubber on the inside either. The only bits that are waterproofed are these flaps here. Well, I won't get it. But uh, this one is. 79 and you can't really see the sticker not the sticker but the print I think it says NVA but it's badly faded you can see that pretty much as well as I can with my eyes so that's the other one in this one no waterproofing anywhere it's just straight heavy canvas the only waterproofing is on the side flap and the large flap here besides that it's just straight canvas and this one's older it's 1970 and it's just got a worn 08-7548 NVA something I can't make out 1827 which isn't the air this one was made I don't think they were that, that advanced in 1800s so that's them so this one I really like it's the finish gas mask bag it's spotless never been issued hasn't got a mark on it apart from the Swedish not the Swedish Finnish castle or whatever it is printed on there hasn't been printed very well it's faded but besides that this bag is immaculate it's going to make a great ADC in Bushcraft Haversack the stitching on it is really good. Canvas is awesome. High quality on the inside. It's got one separated bit here for well, what I would use it for. Water bottle. And just one big compartment next to that. And it's also got some more pockets on the inside. Another one there. Just a great bag you got the shoulder strap which some people 
cut off here and stitch her D-ring in so they can change the strap. I don't think I'm going to bother doing that. I've got a spare pad that came with a Maxpedition bag. I can just stick it on here. It just sticks on with Velcro and that'll do just fine. And the waist strap I'm going to leave on as well. But this bag I'm really happy with. Great condition. A lot of space inside. I think it's going to be a good one. And the Polish bread bag. I've just done a video on, so I'll not bother showing that. This one's been in the family for a lot of years. Don't know what it is. I think it's Dutch gas mask bag. But, uh, I was telling my dad that I'm sick of carrying so much stuff when I do bushcraft and camping. I wanted to get more in the Habersack can uh, camping. And I was showing him some of the videos on the gas mask bag and the bread bags. He ran upstairs and got this. So I might use this as well, but this is very heavy duty canvas too, very well made. I think this has been in the shed for a few years though. I think I remember playing with this when I was a kid. It's got some dried dirt on the bottom. But uh, the strap is pretty torn up, but it's easily placed. It's held on with some really thick rings, so I can just cut that off. The bag itself. I'm sure, I used to play with this a lot when I was a kid, and my dad's used it a lot as well as a camera bag for a lot of years. So it's starting to wear out a little bit. But it's not too bad, it's only got one hole in it there, which is an easy patch up. A little bit there as well, it's starting to thin out. Main thing with it is just this strap, but the bag itself is in really good condition. The inside has had some pockets taken out of it though. But it's got one there, pocket there. Large pocket there. It had one pocket here which has been cut out. And a little pocket here. And then it's got two separate pockets here which would be great for a knife down one side and a silky saw down the other. So it's got a lot of potential. And then this one is the Czechoslovakian rucksack. I've got it converted to a haversack though. Came with these two straps. I'm using one on the Polish bread bag, but they're both clipping through here and then onto this D-ring. And then on the bottom and you've got yourself a little Rucksack. I think it looks better as a haversack though, so converted it to that. But this has got attachment points down here as well for I think your poncho would go on there. It's very similar to the Yugoslavian one. But the site that I got it from had it listed as a Czechoslovakian one. So I'll go with Czechoslovakian. It's also got a, another bit here that goes around your belt to stop it from slapping around leather straps. The bag itself is pretty good quality. It's got another large pocket here with a similar it stops to the fucking hell, it's on stiff. Similar ones to what the Finnish bread bag has, gas mask bag I mean, but it's just one big pocket on the front and on the inside it's got this sleeve which comes out, 
So you can use it for a water bowl or a bread bag or whatever. But it's just one big pocket on the inside and one small pocket on the top of there as well. And this one, I can't read that. So I'm going to clue what it says. It's got a little bit of padding on the back as well. Not much though. Guess I haven't had a chance to take out yet though. I guess I've got a ton of bags now to try out so... I'll get around to it eventually. This one it's one of my favourites. Czechoslovakian M60 bread bag. This thing is seriously heavy duty. The canvas on it is really thick. Stitching on it is awesome. It's got a lot of attachment points as well. Stick it on your belt or whatever. I think you can attach straps to it and turn it into a small rucksack as well. It's got attachment points on the bottom too. And the strap. The same heavy duty canvas as the rest of the bag. And on the inside. We've got Czechoslovakian crossed. Swords from 1974. Or whatever that means. It's been double printed on the swords though. And this one's also in unissued, so it's in perfect condition. On the inside, you just got a huge pocket. Really big separate pocket on the back, you can get your whole hand in. And I wear an extra large glove. And then two smaller pockets on the sides. So I'm really looking forward to trying this one out as well. It looks cool. And there's no way you're going to break it. And you can mount it to the Czechoslovakian M60 bag as well. These rings clip on to the rings on the bag. And you run the strap that runs down the middle of that for securing the flap. It'll go through here and it'll ride on top of the M60. Very well. And lastly... This bag, and I don't know what it is, I received it as a wrong order. I ordered a German, East German bread bag from the same site I ordered the Czechoslovakian rucksack and the, sorry, the Croatian rucksack in the Czechoslovakian M60 bread bag. But the scent is this instead of the German bread bag. I think. It's an East German gas mask bag, but I'm not 100% sure. I sent them an email and this says I can keep this bag and they'll send the bread bag as soon as possible. But uh, I don't know if they'll do that. There's something a bit funny about that site as well. I ordered it from British Army Surplus, I think the site's called. And the... Croatian rucksack and the Czechoslovakian M60 and the German bread bag were all in stock according to the website yet it took them three weeks to dispatch and it's a, uh, based in London I've never had to wait longer than 48 hours for something to dispatch I sent them two emails like where the fuck's my order eventually they came back to us we haven't captured payment yet it's been two weeks, what the fuck you been doing? 
we'll send you an email as soon as we send them out. So a week after that, I got an email and then the next day I got the bags. And it's in stock so I don't know why it took them three weeks to send it. Unless they just send it when they can be bothered. Anyway, ran over. So it looks like I might have to wait another fucking three weeks for the East German bread bag. So that's six weeks altogether. I've got to wait for something I want. And I hate waiting for things. Anyway, ran over. So this, like I said, I don't know what it is. This says I can keep it though. I don't think I will because it's not the sort of thing that I like. It just doesn't have that look about it. It's rubberized. Fake leather I think or it feels like fake leather a rubberized canvas or something I don't know what it is but it's just got that on the inside unissued so it's in good condition but not what I wanted not what I ordered but it's got a big pocket or a thin large pocket on the front spacer in the middle and then two separate pockets and then a connector thing here for something and then it's got the flap down there for the spare things for gas masks I forget what you call them like lens defoggers or something but uh And it's got one pocket on the side and a waist strap on the back but uh, I don't know if I'm going to use this like I say it's not what I ordered not really the sort of thing that I like but uh, I might just keep it as a throw around something that I don't care about breaking or I might just get rid of it I don't know yet, but we'll see and hopefully I'll get the East German bread bag. Like I say, the site's a little funny. I don't know why I had to wait three weeks for something that was in stock to be dispatched from a UK site. And obviously they messed the order up after all of that wait. So anyway, that's my collection of military surplus bags as it stands now. Got a lot of stuff to try out. Probably there's a lot of stuff to get rid of. But, uh, thanks for watching. Chat.